Hi, and uh, thanks for uh, you're bailing me out of here. We, we've been having a most interesting uh, discussion beforehand because one of the things uh, about television is that if you talk about what you're going to talk about beforehand, your guests aren't going to talk about it because they already did talk about it. So you're going to be saying, well, what did you, uh, what do you think about, you know, the situation in Rwanda? Oh, they'll say, and then you have to feed them what they said. You know, oh, you mean that, you know, the Tutsi, you know, and this and that. So we were having a good time just talking about ducks, ducks, you know, <laughs> the, uh, the exigencies of love amongst the duck kingdom. <laughs> And, you know, uh, I guess Mickey Mouse is eventually going... Oh, Gracie Gatto's here as my co-host. Hi. Then we'll introduce the guest. Hello. Oh, we need a little more uh, wide shot there, Brandon. I know. I gained weight from COVID, so you need the wider shot. Although the squeeze Format effect goes. is kind of funky, you know? But, uh, yeah, we were talking about the exigencies of love about ducks. Ducks. And when I, you know... Winnie the Pooh, who uh, <laughs> my, uh, the WPYP TV people, I read the story about, uh, inspired by Winnie the Pooh last week, uh, based on libertarian principles. But, uh, I, you know, he is now not in copyright, so I didn't have to call him Heine the Pooh, but I could have called him Winnie the Pooh. When did he not, when did that copyright thing happen? He's, he's from 1926, so he's out of copyright now. He's public domain now? Right, just him. And the original stories. You can't use the art or stuff. Though. Well, you can't use the Disney stuff. But Mickey Mouse is going to become out of copyright. I have a, we have another guest here, and she's looking at me like, oh, I'm, <laughs> you know, she's talking to who I'm just about to say. My favorite Disney character was Donald Duck when I was a kid. Because when we were kids, there's only three networks, and you watch Disney, and I like Donald Duck. Mickey Mouse never did anything. You remind me of Donald Duck. You have the same kind of like, bah, 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 when you get mad. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> I thought you no. The character that most people say remind is Goofy. No, I don't see Goofy. I see Donald in you. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of. Like I, I don't much. think that's a compliment either. I wouldn't take <laughs> what? What? Gracie, you're the co-host. Why don't you introduce our guest? All right, we have Tony. Tony LeBranch, the state rep, who uh, I thought was 21, but you're 20. We are wrong. I am indeed. Yeah. <laughs> and we have Robin Partello, joining us today. Hello. Who, uh, I guess, uh, triggered the duck conversation, but we're not going to go there. You know. Oh, what a We have to uh, get... Uh, oh, get your phone out of here, Johnny. Yes, we got to turn off phones. Oh. Well, Tony. Tony LeBranch. Le Tony LeBranch. 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 Well, I'm John claude I'm part of the Chassis clan of... Uh, Maine. It goes Maine. Uh, tell us about why you were in the news recently. So recently I made the important decision uh, to leave the Democratic Party. I had been elected uh, as a Democrat to the State House, uh, and I had been serving as a member of the New Hampshire Democratic Party State Committee for two years now. And what I saw at the New Hampshire Democratic Party was a pattern of an undemocratic uh, system. Uh, we saw Chairman Buckley who, uh, you know, strong-armed individuals into voting for him last New Hampshire Democratic Party officer election. Uh, and, you know, what I often had to ask myself is what has the New Hampshire Democratic Party done for me? Let me, let's go back a little. You said you've been on the, uh, the committee for two years? That is correct. So you were started at 18. How did you get involved at your, uh, how did you get involved in politics? You know, I went to Boston University when I was 18 because I had the best political science faculty. I had Howard Zinn, the famous Howard Zinn of a people's history. And basically the most I got to do was I was there for uh, 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 the United Farm Workers going to supermarkets to boycott the grapes because the UFW hadn't uh, been recognized. and. Uh, so that's about all I did, but you are a state rep, something I was never able to achieve. What got you involved in politics at this level? I would did say... You? Yeah, how, how did you rise so quickly? And I'm not saying that as an, to be an ass or anything, but you know, it yeah. is something to be 18. Thank you. And on the committee and then so state rep. 
this started many years ago. It started 10 years ago, actually, almost to the day, uh, because at age 10, in, on February 14th, I was diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer. Oh, wow. So I had to deal with the American healthcare system, which I often call an extortion system because, you know, I was dealing with such a, a devastating medical diagnosis and, you know, it nearly bankrupted my family and um, just seeing the medical bills come in and actually reading them in detail is when I got pissed because Massachusetts General Hospital was charging $40 for a single Tylenol. Right. One Tylenol. That means... Yeah. 80 bucks per dose for a seven day stay at the hospital. They made about $1,000 off of Tylenol alone. When I could buy that same bottle of Tylenol for $7.99 across the street at CVS. And let's just say there's something unique in your experience because your parents are natives of Quebec and Canada. I have uh, ancestors that came out of Quebec, but you know, in 18, 1880s and 1890s. But so you, Health Canada is, uh, is what would be put down as socialized medicine, but can the Canadians that have it are grateful that they do have it, aren't they? Yes. And uh, your parents, it must have been a shock. Yes, for sure, because uh, as somebody who goes back to Quebec almost every other month, I go see my grandparents and my family up there, and they only have nice things to say about the Canadian healthcare system because no matter uh, their level of income, no matter anything, they can have access to care. Right. They don't have to worry about when am I gonna be able to see the doctor because there's always a doctor there for them. While here in the United States, we oftentimes, you know, if you don't have enough money, then you can't get the level of care that everybody could get in Quebec. Right, and I lived in Germany, and so I know the French and the German systems are excellent too. Uh, and uh, an American uh, friend of mine was in France, had like had had the appendix out, had the appendix out. It didn't cost her that, that you know that much, and uh, yeah. Uh, so go on, but that was a, but yeah, you recovered. I did. It's in uh, remission. I'm now going to be uh, nine years in remission uh, right now, and it'll be ten years by the end of the year. That's uh, great which hopefully that maintains itself, but... Uh, so your life became focused. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. When I was 10 years old dealing with the American healthcare system, I had a renewed sense of purpose in life because I thought nobody should be extorted simply for wanting to live. Because I'm 10 years old and they're extorting my family and myself just because I want to live. And just imagining what other people are going through. You know, we have, you know, the system's making money off dying and injured individuals. Uh, and that to me is just immoral and disgusting. So I made it my life's purpose to at least ameliorate the situation here in the United States because uh, nobody should have to go through what I had to go through at age 10. Yeah, I remember uh, in 1971, my brother was afflicted with eternal bleeding. My mother is a single mother and uh, she's got making $50 a week as a secretary on Blue Cross. I can, never, I can still see her face after 50 some odd years. How do I pay for, the, how am I gonna pay for this? Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's an added burden. Your son might be dying <laughs> and, and then that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's Go it's fund me, it's the, I think it's the third um, most used for uh, insurance, insurance. <laughs> yeah, yeah if you would. right and uh, i hate to pick on republicans we have a republican, <laughs> we have a republican um, on the panel today and, but you know when they're in congress i guess you can't discharge medical bills in bankruptcy or they've limited that ability to do that which is outrageous mm -hmm. yeah. well, that's, just like what, they that's what people months. used to do is run up their medical bills and then file bankruptcy and it's discharged. Well, it's all like you're running up with you have cancer. Well, My no, father had not cancer. Not intentionally, yeah. Right. but yeah. because of the way the system or the hospitals work, because he is right. I mean, when I saw my medical bills after having a child, I was blown away. Yeah. I, you know, and what do you do if you are in fact pregnant and you don't have insurance? You know, he's right. The they system. charge you. I don't know about you, but I had I gave birth in Los Angeles, right? And they gave me a half used can of the pay the pain <laughs> spray the pain away stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, for like jocks use it, but for your crotch, and it's half used and it's like almost empty. No, thank you. Did you have one of those? No. And they just passed it around the maternity ward. 
Yeah. We don't do that here in New Hampshire. <laughs> okay, so it's just California then. Uh, yeah. But I had to pay for a full can when I got like that much. Yeah. Yeah, that was that. And was how much cool. was it? I probably I don't know. I don't remember. But I remember being mad about the itemized expenses. Like. Oh yeah, and he's right. Ibuprofen. Yeah. Tylenol. It adds up. Oxygen adds up too. Yeah. It just. Air. Well, I just want to. I just want to say had it, we had a show. Uh, one of my friends wrote a book uh, about uh, you know a, a minute is a day uh, by a emergency room doctor in the Bronx handling COVID and just uh, talk about a drama, uh, uh, constantly evolving. But the people were uh, Hispanic and black, poorest of the poor. And the only- oh, gee, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> the, uh, well, you know, I, we're talking uh, about- No, I don't have to- uh, Yeah, I, I I'm know. sorry. No, that was, you know, kind of, uh, <laughs> but- I'm the, the Latino in the room, so. Right. Yeah. And uh, uh, the thing is, is that these these poor people, they're poor people, and the only medical care, like I have a primary care doctor, the only medical care contact they had were emergency room doctors. And because of the lack of care, uh, the, the people, because there is a higher mortality of COVID amongst like Latin, poor Latinos, poor blacks. Poor. <laughs> well, no, because that's is what we were really yeah. meant. And uh, because they don't have the access to medical care. Yeah. And uh, so when they are coming in, they've already got all these preconditions that are making it far worse. And these were like uh, primarily like white Jewish doctors because it was a hospital created by a Jewish charity 100 years ago when it was a Jewish neighbor. And they're, they're dedicated to these people in this community. And, uh, but the lack of health care that people, poor people have access to, it has just, probably made, made this pandemic far worse. You know? Well, I saw on my yeah. town Facebook page that a lot of people are experiencing just that, that if you go to an emergency room, the wait is eight to 10 hours and then they can't find a bed for you. And it's yeah. just, it, it's gotten I probably I had COVID, I just got over COVID. Mm. And I probably should have gone to the ER thinking back because on it was a Wednesday. I remember thinking, mm -hmm. I called you mm -hmm. and I couldn't breathe. And I remember thinking I was seriously gonna die today. And I never had a, a cold or flu where that was even going to come into question. You felt terrible, but you never felt like you were going to pass away. Yeah. And that was a real concern. COVID is real. Well, this is a new, the new, new strain. strain. I, I had the I Omicron. Think. I got the, I got the, the scary sounding one. The new one. This one sounds far worse than the, the first Delta strain. Delta and so it's else. just, it's knocking people out for two, three weeks. Yeah, I was sick for about three weeks. So we'll get back to Tony because so uh, <laughs> you're offering us a whole uh, a, a way to uh, frame a narrative. Mm -hmm. And so when did you become politically active? I, I would assume you became politically active in school. That, yeah, that is correct. <laughs> I became politically active in eighth grade uh, following the Bernie right. Sanders campaign. He really okay, inspired yeah. me because he finally spoke to me about there should not be greed in healthcare. It should be about treating sick people, it should be about treating everybody. Uh, it should not be about, let's care about the insurance industry and the shareholders of that industry. Well, let's yeah. actually do what is right for everybody, not just you know the special interests that fund, I hate to say it, both parties. So that's well, why- They do fund both parties. Yeah. Nothing changes. And, and big pharma too. Yeah. Insurance companies started taking over doctors' practices, and I've been told the last independent practice in Manchester was like three years ago. It's gone. Yeah, so the doctor doesn't dictate your care. It's the insurance company. That's correct because even I, when I need to get my prescription sometimes, I have to call my doctor so that he can yell at the insurance or whoever's on the other side of the phone to say he needs this prescription or he needs this level of care. It's not negotiable because as I said earlier, I had stage three colon cancer and it was caused by a rare genetic condition. So I still have to go every year to get my colonoscopy. And at one point, the insurance was like, why does this kid need a colonoscopy? He's 20 years old. And it's like, yeah. well, me? if you actually look at the medical history, you'd know why. But obviously, they're just there to limit care. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Whew. Yeah, I just have to say about the Obama uh, care, I always called that uh, the no uh, health insurance company left behind act. Yeah. But that's all they could get through at the time, yeah. you know. And, and I would say that. Obamacare, although far from the best thing in the world, still right. helped me indi as an individual exactly. because it removed limits on how much could be covered. And I believe my dad's union insurance went up to $1 million. 
And as someone with stage three colon cancer, we reached that one do million dollar limit pretty fast. But thanks to Obamacare, we did not have to worry about that anymore. Uh, so I'm a million dollar man in that regard that it's cost that much just to you keep me alive. In total, right? Not in just total. for one year? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say. In total, yes. Oh. So you mean there's a limit on the care they're going to give you? Uh, there used to be before Obamacare. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, there are a lot of benefits. Of, hey, we have a caller. Uh, you, uh, do we want to take it? I, I think it lucky? could be. I've been uh, writing a lot about Victoria, a uh, landslide Vicki Sullivan, and uh, uh -oh. they seem to be focusing on me. Okay. Is there somebody there? Hello? Hello? Yes, who is this? Well, Mr. Hopwood. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, it has nothing to do with your guesses between you and me. I, I know I won't be able to see you, maybe. I'm oh, sure. Mary, I'll, I'll tell you about that. I'll tell you about that after the show. I'll send you the message in two hours. I've got because your uh, thing on what Facebook. I want to know who started. I'm getting rumors again that you <laughs> want to take over my show on Thursday night at 5 o'clock, and it's wrong. I never said I was going to retire. When I do, everybody will know. There you go. Hey, right. I'll, I'll talk to you uh, in a two hours. Because I want to know who started it. I, I, I don't think you would even lies. know who did it. I'll just say uh, the person was a Republican. Ooh. I'll get back to you, Mary, okay? Uh, good thing I'm a Democrat. And I, I am, too. Oh. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> Mary, it's just one of those things. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I'm getting crucified today. Just your party. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're nothing like your party. And I'm nothing like my former party, so there's that. When did well, you get into the de but when did the Democrats when did the pull Democrats you up by your, your, your bootstraps? <laughs> or you picked yourself up by the bootstraps? So obviously I had to wait to become a, a registered voter to really be 18. involved. Um, al although I was a bit active in the high school Democrats, although my school didn't have a chapter. It was... You're from Amherst. I am from which Amherst, Which is yes. primarily Republican? Uh, it used to be. It's turned into a swing district, I'd oh. say. Uh, it's one of those purple districts. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so to go even back further, I started by running for school board because as a student of Sauhegan, we live in one of the nicest communities, one of the most affluent communities in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. yet some of my classrooms did not have heating, they had leaky ceilings, they had wall oh. collapsible walls that did not work, and you know. In Amherst? In Amherst. You have the highest uh, uh, school, you know, per student per capita in the state. I know because my sister lives there. We do, and it's because the current administration doesn't have their priorities right. They believe that putting more administrators at the uh, school district level is what's needed. When really, are students really going to be learning if they have to wear their winter jackets in the middle of winter or if they have classes canceled because uh, the collapsible walls stuck open or s stuck closed in some cases. I've had classes canceled when I was in high school because of this. Um, and I've been bringing up that maintenance issue and you know, the school board has gone 15 years without actually properly maintaining our building and that's going to cost millions of dollars to the taxpayers because they've been ignoring this issue. So that's when at 18 years old, a senior in high school, I decided to run for school board because I was tired of it. Students and teachers were not being listened to. So I ran for school board, I told what I just told you to the public, and it shocked a lot of people. And I had the pictures to back me up. Oh, well, they um, don't like pictures. No, they don't, they like, don't like pictures. Like I showed it to the education committee the other day, and they were shocked. You're a whistleblower. I am. That's what I am. Yeah. Um, so I ran for school board, obviously 18 years old, still a senior in high school. It was a long shot. But I came in third place out of four, 200 votes away from winning, so it gave me hope. And it got my message across to a lot of people. Um, and during my campaign, I, I learned that education funding in New Hampshire is a big issue. It's not just an Amherst issue. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we're the only state that has like a constitutional uh, case. Uh, 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 what's it? Uh, this co what's the town that's uh, called? Uh, is it Colebrook? No, it's. Uh, I should know this. I should know it because I did a show on it. it but, but there's two cases yes. about the inequitable funding of uh, schools because of the property tax system. And in any other state I was in outside of New Hampshire, like in New York or uh, California or Massachusetts, and I remember a case in New Hampshire, it would have been rectified. So let me, let me ask this. Was it is, 
Claremont. Claremont, Claremont that is it. Yes. Yes. But nothing happens. No. 22 so years. And are you happens. telling me that the pay rate for e is per student in each city and it's different? Oh, yeah. City yeah. To Manchester's city? about yeah. ten to 11,000. You guys are about fourteen to fifteen. You and Wyndham were the highest. Then they take some money away from you. There's supposed to be some equalization. But Manchester has one of the lowest uh, Manchester uh, Manchester. Uh, paying per student than any other place. Yeah. Goffstown, our next door to the town, is much higher. Wow, that seems inequitable. Yeah. Right, and there were two in New cases. New Hampshire are not receiving a the New same Hampshire education. The New Hampshire said something has to be done, yeah. but nothing is done. And it's based on property taxes. Yes, everything, uh, all schools uh, funding is property taxes, yeah. so. which is really sucks it to people. My mother, who's made $50 a month her entire, you know, $50 a week her entire life, she had her house. She paid higher property taxes than my former father-in-law who had a house with three times as much in, in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And I think the perfect example is, you know, the lakes region where most of the homes on the lakes are secondary homes. Right. So they can have super low property taxes. They don't have that many students, but they have some of the lowest tax rates in the state. And then you have cities like Manchester and Nashua who, because of the, the property values, struggle to properly fund education and make it equitable across the state. As the state legislature downshifts more and more costs onto the uh, local school districts. That yeah. And that's why I decided to run for state rep is because this... Did you win school board? I no. did not win school board. Yeah. yeah. Sad. Do the schools get, they get federal funding though? Yeah, without, without federal that. funding, Manchester would be, <laughs> you know? Yeah. We'd be really hurting. Yeah. So, so what's on your ten-year plan? Are you going to be a senator next, or? But you made it. Uh, how did you come in? Did you do well? Did you uh, as a state rep. I had to go through a recount. I lost <laughs> to Tammy Simmons of all people. If the, I uh, recall correctly, city GOP head. I won. It's a three-person district. I, I came within seventy-five votes of the fourth-place winner. Huh? So I, it was a pretty close race. I was expecting uh, a recount, but. Uh, they That's never true. requested one, so. Right, uh, it's gotta be like under 10. Yeah. The machines really work, unless the, there's too m the ballots were folded, like yeah. in Wyndham. Yeah. But uh, then you got taken up by the party? Uh, to go back even further, I guess I would say, between school board and the November election, it was the uh, primaries. The yes. primaries took place in February, and I ha was elected to be on the uh, 2020 delegate selection list for Bernie Sanders. Oh, that's Yay. great. Uh, Although he didn't win enough votes for me to become a delegate automatically, uh, they do what is called the alternative yep. delegate selection, and I was elected alternative delegate for Did Bernie you get to Sanders. go to the convention? I did. Excellent. From my home. <laughs> oh, that's did, right. Yeah, oh. Because of COVID. And it's not like the old days. I got to go to the last one before COVID, yeah. and that was fun. The old days. The uh, old days, yeah. Journalists. Oh, every you got you Two years ago. And free food. Now at Fenway, they charge you 15 bucks for the spread. Dodgers. Yeah, oh, they charge you. Know. That's you even know, more. That's worse. <laughs> Between you know parking, a hot dog, and one beer, you're looking at 60 bucks, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's not get into baseball right now. No, no, no. So that's how I got into uh, the party because that's another issue I've. Were you a star? Did they see? Because you were young. That's, that's something that makes you a star. But. Uh, no. Did they have their eye on you for. Did you get a good committee assignment, stuff like that? Um, I mean, if I had gotten elected, I had fallen out with Ray and everybody, Kathy solved everybody, although I don't... You got, not, you got something against Kathy? You know, I would be, like, no, I, I don't have nice anything one. anymore. And uh, I would be, you know, if they had the dog catcher committee, that's what <laughs> I would have been on. You know. Or taking up the garbage committee. So in the New Hampshire House, they have a seniority system. So as uh, a oh. freshman, I get my last pick. You got on yeah. the Veterans Committee. I did. Every, well, everybody gets on the, that's the last, Why is that's that the, the last pick? Nobody gives a damn about veterans. You must know that. You're a vet. I think they do. <laughs> they well, talk about it. We only get, uh, if I'm <laughs> recalling correctly, we only get like 14 bills a year. Yeah. And most of them are unanimous bills brought forward by the Veterans Advisory Committee. If you're a homeless vet in New Hampshire, you go to Massachusetts. That's where you go. That's the homeless shelter. I've, I've heard that before. They, and they've never done anything, whether the Democrats are in power or Republicans. They've never changed that because well, they don't want to spend any money. Congratulations on getting the into the House. Yeah. See, I Thank got you. stunted. They denied me a, a bank account at Bank of New England. <laughs> I'm bringing that up again. I'm pissed. <laughs> so, yeah. 
for being Latina. Mm -hmm. Because she went to the bank with her wh a white guy that's going to run, and they gave him a the, bank you know, you have to have the hours. Mm -hmm. you have to have like the friends of John Hopwood uh, yeah. the bank account, right? yeah. which is so twenty dollars. Congratulations, you made yeah. it that far. So, are either of you going to run again? No. Oh, I, I run against uh, Tony Pappas for uh, the county uh, uh, seat because of all the people that die, like in the uh, the. Uh, the, the jail here, the Valley Street jail, but nobody gives a damn. Nobody, nobody cares about. I'm not running government. again because I'm making a film, and it's. I, I think I could do more storytelling than I can as a state rep. There's well, too many rules. There's too many rules. You, what's it like inside there? Yeah, what's it like inside? Tell us. What drove you to do you get good, uh, do you get good food? declare independence? You have two fans over here apparently, <laughs> <laughs> like groupies. It's exciting. So what's know? it like in the house? Uh, I only go as a journalist and talk to people I know, you yeah, know, that uh, that did get elected, like your best friend or anything. <laughs> I would because say you couldn't get elected in the district, but they could, you know. How humiliating. Mm. Heidi, I love you. There's no animosity there, what though, right? What is going well, on like with the state house and the <laughs> N-word, man? Did you <coughs> hear oh, that? Wow. Let's go with this thing. That's a whole, we can do okay, a whole We're going to get there. Okay. I can assure <laughs> That'll you That'll be, there. you know, we only got another half hour. Because it gets into my story. It okay, gets okay. I want to hear this. Okay, let's okay. But what it's like Spill in the state gossip, house Tony. right now, yeah. it's toxic. Well, you're in a minority. Well, yes, yeah. there's that. But I would say that what surprised me the most, because, you know, in New Hampshire, we have a citizen-run legislature. You know, my town has three, three and a half. I always say that because we have a flotarial as well. But we have three representatives just for the small town of Amherst. We and are, one flotarial. And one flotarial yeah. with Bedford. Okay. Um, so I always thought that, you know, we're so close to the people that we're not going to be as corrupt as, you know, the people in D.C. or anything. But no, in my time at the <laughs> State House, it's all about me, me, me. What will get me reelected? What will get me higher up the totem pole? Mm -hmm. What will benefit me? Not what will benefit the people. Because when oh, yeah. I took the oath of office, I did not take it to my political party. I did not take it for myself. I took it for the United States Constitution, the New Hampshire Constitution, and most importantly, the people of Amherst. Right. I'm here to do what is best for the people, not what is best for myself. And I think that's what most politicians don't understand in Concord. What I hear is that there's uh, only eight people on both sides of the aisle in the House that have any power at all. And it's like 400 seats? 400 seats. Who needs all of those people? Huge turnover every, but for within f two terms, it's half. Mm. Amateurs, amateurs. Oh God! You know. I came up with a mashup of the best of Al Baldassaro alone. It was like two minutes worth of just news clippings. And why? Why do we need all these people? All these but I have a question. If, let's say, for example, when you're running, don't they fund your campaign? Oh well, that's that's uh, the, the different parties. That. Yes. So yes, in my specific case, young Democrats. I was still on good terms with Ray Buckley before last year's leadership election. Uh oh. <laughs> and uh, so my district, as I said, is a purple district. Yeah. So the party put it on a priority list. So yeah. we got a lot of attention Lucky. from the party. We got a lot of support from the party. But now that I voted against Ray last year uh, in the chairman election. I You've been frozen out. Yes, oh. I've been cut out of the party. Yeah. Uh, so, like I said, what has the party ever done for me? What you have know? you well, done Well, we for just me, asked maybe? you, did it give you any money? The Young Democrats give you any money? The Young Democrats... Uh, Who are supposedly not a part of the Democrat Party, but they're right there. They're adjacent. I would yeah, say I had an amazing relationship you're with the Young Democrats just because, obviously, the youngest you're a young Democrat. Democrat. Yeah. You fit the demographic. Yes. But if you're 40, <laughs> you're still a young Democrat. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh, the cutoff is 39. Once you hit 40, you're too old. I, yeah. I, I didn't consider myself young at 39, but I do now at 62, you know, at 39. I had such a good relationship with the Young Dems that I actually thought that I could continue caucusing with them uh, after I changed I know, parties. Me too, but. Yeah. Seems so that much. they all took it personally, and even one of the uh, leaders of the Young Democratic Caucus called me the night that the news broke of my departure, and called on me to resign. And I <laughs> why? What's the what's the point? Sh they said, "quote Are you doing this for yourself? You're so selfish. Oh my god! If you don't want to be part of the party because you think it's corrupt and you think the entire system's corrupt, why don't you just leave and oh. resign?" That's not the answer. And it's well, like. 
I'm here, like I said earlier, I'm here not for the party. I don't care if my departure hurts the party because I'm exposing How the truth. How many Twitter followers have you lost since you left? I want to say about 50. Okay, but that's I've, I've, I've been gaining. I only have 50. I lose some. <laughs> like, I'll see notifications you got a new follower, but it stays the same amount of followers. Yeah. So I know that I've. I still gained some just from that, but I, oh, there's a lot of people that haven't followed me because. Do you of that. think you're in jeopardy to not get reelected because of this decision, though? Could be. Part. But we got a lot of work to do with a third party. Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah, that's just yeah. because you guys were talking about that before you came here, Tony, about yeah. independence and whether she. Uh, yeah, Robin. Yeah, why don't you be whether being an independent will help you in a purple district or, or you know a district. You had the story about well, Dover and the Democrat in Dover, and you're never going to get elected as a Democrat in Dover. No, Derry. Or London Derry. Derry. Yeah, Derry. 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 Yeah. Well, Dover saying, you would. <laughs> I was saying that Derry is so highly Republican that if you're a Democrat, it's very difficult to run in Derry. So would you be better off um, maintaining your status as a dem Democrat or going independent? Would that help you? And I'm thinking in a place like Amherst or Derry, it would be more beneficial. I'm just worried about, not worry, but my question would be about funding for your campaign. I assume it's expensive. Um, so there's a lot to unpack there. Just Sorry. Uh, <laughs> first We have off, time. You can always come back. Yes. First off, I'm not running again. That was part of my decision is. Well, that sucks. Yeah. Uh, because uh, I'll explain myself. Uh, couldn't stand the BS. So I had been renting a room at my parents' house oh. since uh, I graduated high school. Um, but being a young, progressive, gay representative got me a lot of negativity. And there had been a lot of uh, harassment. There had been in people- In Amherst? Yes, in Amherst. I had suspicious vehicles outside my house. I, oh. A lot of hatred. People were burning. Uh, one incident is during the last school board election last year, uh, one of my supporters put a Tony sign in their lawn, and that night, their pride flag got burnt on their property. What? Well, I gotta say, in Manchester and Bedford, there were some people, uh, you know, signs being destroyed and disappearing and everything. That just was part of the yeah. fun, you know what I mean? I and it wasn't fun, but, yeah. you know, so that's part of it, too. And when a guy here that was a notorious sign destroyer went from Manchester to Bedford, suddenly everybody's saying, if they were Republicans, everybody's Republican, he's destroying our signs, and, and we're Republicans. Yeah. So that is kind of it, but it doesn't feel good when it's being done to you, yeah. Well, I, I you know, I signed up for this. And, I and was expecting something. W uh, were you a lifelong resident of Amherst? Uh, I moved to Amherst in 2014 in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Before Best. then, I lived in Nashua. Nashua's my my hometown. I Me always too. like to say you it's back. such a beautiful town. You're going back to Nashua? Um, no. Uh, my parents ended up selling the house in Amherst oh. because of the harassment that oh. we've been getting. It was that bad. It was that bad. Yeah, and what? relates to why I left the party. So all of this stuff had been going on. You know, the pride flag being burnt. Uh, the Facebook harassment, going after my family and everything. And I texted Ray Buckley personally. I texted his number and I said, Ray, I'm dealing with so much harassment right now and I need help. You have more experience than me. Can you help me out? And his response was, I'm busy. Send me an email. So I sent an email. I even had the pictures of the pride flag burnt. I had pictures. I had evidence. I had a whole paragraph explaining my situation. I sent it to Chairman Buckley, and I sent it to the party office. Chairman Buckley is his Twitter handle, yeah. yeah. At a Chairman Buckley. Yeah, at Chairman Buckley. <laughs> Never heard back. Crickets. Not even a word. Not even Would a, you no, talk I, to him now if you could? I would, but I don't think he ever would want to talk to me again. <laughs> you never know. I had him on for the film for an um, interview, and he was talking about his experiences growing up a gay man in the you know in the 60s and 70s and how hard that was so hearing you talk about present day really blows my mind that he didn't call you back i was surprised too because before like i said last 2021 nhdp officer elections before that i had gotten along right because them. you voted against them yeah really. and all votes are public in mm. the nhdp which is a whole separate issue on democratic but Oh, yeah, I was surprised there. too I because vote. Yeah. he he had done so much just reading his Wikipedia page. He's a, a trailblazer for young LGBT officials like myself. But oh, and he was a real uh, aggressive barn burner type. 
when he was an alderman here, like and when they went after my friend Bill Cashin, who if you go to the chamber has this big thing, he was the one who fought, you know, was fighting for him and that. And him and Kathy Sullivan, they brought the Manchester Democratic Party out of nothingness, you know. That's what Even though this was a Democratic party. city. And then they took over the uh, Manchester, the New Hampshire party. And there seems to be a Manchester bias up there, which, because they're from Manchester. True, yeah. So they did, you know, because I fought, I fought them many times and everything before I, from a detente, because I'm not going to run for anything again. And I've had things done to me, because that's part of politics. But yeah, they really did a lot. Uh, so I'm just saying this. Yeah, but it, yeah, in your situation. Yeah, it, it seems that he cares more about himself and his power. That <laughs> That's he power. doesn't care about me, but he doesn't even care about the state level politics. He only cares about the federal delegation and the federal delegation because they get money, they get the donations. But for us, he doesn't care if the state house is. Why do you think that is? Because the New Hampshire primary. We pick your president. New Hampshire, pri I realized after getting here that the New Hampshire primary, which I loved, my mm -hmm. first one was 68, first one I voted when it was 70, it was 80, because 76 I was involved, uh, and the 72, and then you realize it so dominates things here, because it is harder for a political party to get on the ballot in New Hampshire 10 times more than to get on the party in California. California, you have like five parties, you got Peace yep. and Freedom, Green, which I was briefly because I was mad at them for a while, and <laughs> Democrats, Republicans, and there's like another party. And you know, it's very rare for a Green or a Peace and Freedom. Yes. Occasionally, get like in Berkeley, will get elected, but they can be on the ballot. They've been on the ballot for years. Even the Libertarians here cannot stay on the ballot. It's ten times harder, and I think that's because the New Hampshire primary. You got to have the two parties. You got your independence, but you're one or the other because that is a big industry. And so I started realizing this really f words things up here mm -hmm. because then I realized because Kathy Sullivan and Ray Buckley, I used to be really mad at them for the stuff you're saying. Then I realized when that primary is the tail that wags the dog, if they're going to keep that and do what they can to keep that primary, and if they if they didn't, <laughs> you know, yeah, and we I, we we gave the country uh, 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 Trump. That's indisputable. And there's other things where what happened, but uh, I'm just saying, yeah, their role is more primary towards, like you said, the federal and that and that. So you just have to talk over him whenever you got to make a point. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, I, I thank you for bringing that up. And it goes back to your point about, is it better to be an independent? Yeah, let's go to that. <laughs> it's the system. I just testified on two bills last week. In New Hampshire, it's impossible for third parties to even be on the ballot and even have a chance to run. So there's an independent in my district who I hope takes my seat next year. She has to raise 150 signatures, 150 nomination papers, I should say. And, you know, the issue of funding is one. How is she going to get her signs, her internet presence, and all that? The system is built just to have two parties in New Hampshire. And yes. I testified in front of the committee last week to lower the barriers for third parties and independents to be on the ballot, and it was bipartisan backlash. Oh my God, yeah, it's like, you know, uh, <laughs> anathema, you know, a curse on you. How <laughs> dare you attack this? Yep. And, and it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. How much does it cost on average for to run an election? So at least two thousand. Yeah, it, in at my case, 2, it was about two thousand yeah. dollars to to run a campaign. Signs. You know, signs. I did a lot of Facebook ads just because it was the pandemic. Um, and that's another thing is that independent candidates and third party candidates don't have the necessarily free ro resources we get from the party because the party gave me you know uh, mailers. They gave me access to the voter database. Yeah, that is critical. That. We used to have to threaten them to get it yeah. because we were just flunkies. <laughs> this is before I had my falling out. So that's why so many people don't want to be independent. You're forced to run one of two parties. It's kind of career suicide. Yeah. It's like the Free Staters came here. They, but you know, then again, they will either go with the Democrat or the Republican, the, whether the district is more. Which uh, uh, Matt Conlon's girlfriend Jenny uh, came here as a Free Stater. 
she would want to be an independent, but she can't. Mm -hmm. So she's a Republican. That that would be the natural home. But they've taken over the Republican Party, the Republican Party that my mother voted for. And Lou uh, D'Alessandro was a Republican. And then I came back to New Hampshire after years, and he's a Democrat, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. I always wonder, and this is maybe a good question for you, how did you pick your party affiliation at such a young age? I would say that primarily it was obviously my parents were both Democrats, uh, but for me personally, making up my own mind, uh, like I said, it was mostly Bernie Sanders' footsteps I f yeah. followed, and I'm following today as an independent just because I see that there's systemic failures in both parties, but when it came to picking a party to run on, uh, looking at, I read all the party platforms, including the Libertarian, Democrat, and Republican one, and, you know, obviously in the Republican platform it says that gays should not marry, and as a gay man I strongly disagree with that. Really? Uh, it still says it that? It still says really? that, yep. yep. So if they say, like, Tammy Simmons, who was a city GOP, who I've had many conflicts with, we from the same word. What about the law She party, voted Kevin? to keep Look. gay marriage, so... Yeah. I, you know, as it, a libertarian. It still shocks me today because yeah. Trump, you know, ran on saying I love gay people and all that, but the platform, like, when you actually read the platform, it still says we believe in traditional marriage between a man and a woman and it should stay like that and overturn uh, Ober Obergefell versus Hodges, if that's the court case that legalized gay marriage. And oh. Yeah. Wow. Well, so we I passed the law of gay marriage here. I think that's sort one. of why a lot of the younger generation are leaning democratic because they view the Republican Party as antiquated, old, you know, non-binding. Rob, Robin's son is leaning toward Democrat and she's a Republican. My so. son's a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> but Well, here's the thing. You talk about Bernie Sanders. In Vermont, you have actually, there's only 150 people in the state legislature. Yeah. They're actually paid a real yeah. wage. And there are Democrats, Republicans, and three independent parties. And at times, like, because uh, Bernie Sanders, when my father lived in Burlington in 74, ran under something called the Liberty Something Party. Yeah, Liberty Union. He was a so Liberty Union socialist. But they have the, the party that came out of that has people in both the Senate and the House. And yeah. they share a party with the Democrats. Yeah. I mean, when I came back from to New Hampshire in 2010, I expected New Hampshire to have... There'd be like 50 libertarians, there'd be like a green party and that. And I was shocked. And that's a great point because... I was shocked. It's a, the two-party system is just a systemic failure. Let's just it, say it like it that. It is, yes. You only have bad and worse. Those are your options. Yeah. Okay, you can't not vote for somebody you truly believe in. You have to choose for who's going to not hurt me as much. So what i believe in and what i believe we need to do is just abolish the two-party system absolutely and I move agree. towards a proportional system i agree with you totally yeah but you know the thing is uh our Who's gonna, how, how are they gonna make money off of us if they do if we do that yeah and, and the system i always point to is germany's where they yeah. vote for their local representatives but then on the same ballot it says what party do you most agree with yeah hmm. and then they make their legislature proportional to that so let's say uh, in this case. The percentage uh, of vote the party gets. Yeah. Liberals get 20% of the vote, they'll get 20% of the seats. And I took their model, I took the, you know, data from the last uh, elections, and I'll just use 2016 as an example. In New Hampshire, Libertarians won 3 or 4% of the vote yeah. uh, across the state. If we had a proportional representation system, that would entitle them to 16 seats in the New Hampshire House. How many did, did they have? Zero at election, and three because Republicans switched parties. And if there was a proportional system, people would actually vote for Libertarians knowing they could get in. Tony, yeah. the moment when you said you had enough of the Democratic Party, wasn't it like a second coming out? Uh, I would say <laughs> yes, because I've always believed the two-party system is yeah. bad. It, since eighth grade, I've seen that there's just been systemic failure. Uh, and, you know, we can't change anything about our country without addressing electoral reform, our election system, because under the current system, it's always the special interests, because there's only two. So there's no you know, independent or third party that isn't corrupt that you can vote for. We have a phone call. Hi, welcome to WPYP TV. Hello? Hello? Yes. I thought it was a recording. <laughs> It, You're you, on the air. I am is robotic. It, is this like a psychic, like a uh, norm? 
No, uh, no, that is uh, that is at five o'clock. Oh, that's at five o'clock. Yes. All right. Thank is there some that is there something you'd like us to predict the future? We have Gracie here, who's, you know, can I out you as a witch? Yes, I'm a witch. Do you have anything to? Uh, yeah. Um, it's live. Maybe you can predict it. What happened? Well, five o'clock. Uh, Norm's friends will be on, and I'm sure you know they can help. Thank you very much for calling. In fifteen right, minutes. Thank you. Yeah. See, live TV is uh, you know <laughs> you should have seen things that have happened here. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was on at night, it was even worse. <laughs> but I would an, another aspect of that is or problem as you identify. Is people tell you to vote straight ticket. Like that's the mindset of so many people. Mm -hmm. So you're not voting for the best candidate. You're simply voting red. There's some horrible yeah. Democrats that I've met. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure <laughs> sure. you have met. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. when you register yeah. for the primary, you have to declare which party, right? Yeah. And then at the end, you have to switch back to undeclared so that in the end, you, you sort of get right. a say, right? So for two minutes, you are the party. If yeah. You're an independent. So, but like the thing is, People don't know that you're supposed to switch after, or that you can switch. That happens. And norm. there's time limits. Yeah. And if you don't do it in time, then you know you, you can't get out. So if you want to switch parties, you may want to. I voted for John Huntsman in the 2012 Republican primary because I I interviewed him five times. He should be like the head of the, of the Republican Party, a vastly intelligent person, compassionate and all that. And of course, God knows where he was. They stuck him in Russia as the <laughs> ambassador, you know? And for two minutes as a Republican, but because I knew Obama was gonna win. <laughs> you know? So I had the advantage of after, you know, that's the only Republican I voted for in like 20 years. I voted for a couple of local Republicans. We used to have Irene Messier, who was liberal, but a Republican. There used to be liberal Republicans. Her last name was Messier? Yeah, Messier, or Messier. Oh. But uh, she was liberal, uh, like Lou D'Alessandro was a liberal Republican. There used to be Rockefeller Republicans. Mm -hmm. You know, the Republicans used to be He used to same. be something. Yeah. <laughs> same, yeah. They were respectable. Warren Rudman was my senator, was in the Army. Mm -hmm. One of the great senators is respectable. Man. I think there's a lot of work to do in both parties, and yeah. I think you've I identified several reasons why. And they don't like dealing with people with an IQ over 75. Yeah. So. And I, I 75, you're being very generous. <laughs> but I think our ideas would hurt them financially in the long mm -hmm. run, you know, and that's why. Every it is a business. They are private corporations. Every, every time you go there, you see lobbyists there, and it's like, you know, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. In the state house, they're walking around with their yellow badges. We're going to become lobbyists. You, <laughs> you too. Yeah, we should. But they make hey, a lot of money. you got to come back next week. I agree with you totally about the proportional representation. Oh, that's great. I could speak for hours about my ideas about electoral reform. Well, I, just, I, we need, then we need I won't something show for the third up. party. You, you can take it. Well, Gracie here. Yeah, I'll take over. <laughs> Because well, I will start talking. I'll start talking about what happened in 1963. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. Back to present day. So yeah, yeah, you have to keep a tight rein. And on they it. like to talk about witches. Well, you know, uh, I don't see why no, witches should started. have their own party. <laughs> but you know, I want if we had a parliamentary system, and Howard Zinn always said we'd been better off if we lost the revolution. And I had a great grandfather that fought in that too. We'd have been better off because, like Canada, we'd have a parliament. And I would like to be able to vote for a party that actually represents what I think. I would vote for a like social democrat, a Bernie Sanders yeah, exactly. type of party. You know, uh, like the New Democrats yeah. in Canada, which. Uh, when I, I voted can't. for Hillary, I did yeah. need a shower. <laughs> I did. But to vote, you, you voted have to for have Hillary? a chance mm -hmm. to be in the government. I, I, I voted for Hillary. I, we, you know, There's like no one choice. Of those, one or what the are you going to do? Yeah. And I actually had met her a few times. Yeah, I didn't vote. Is she nice? Oh yeah, she's a lot nicer in person. <laughs> she's, oh, she's one of those people like uh, Al Gore and John Kerry. That all Robert's TV, got a story. It's like, I'll, I'll okay, tell it after. Go. No, no, no. Um, oh, you got a Clinton story. She's got a Hillary Clinton. I, I didn't want to share it right now. Right now, okay, okay. I have some that I can't share. Um, you have something you can't share. Well, you're there. You know politics. You're there. You're not yeah. supposed to talk about what what goes on, or you wouldn't be in the room. When I'm old and have Alzheimer's, it'll all come out. <laughs> I met John McCain. He was 
very nice. I also met John McCain when I was seven years old. Yeah. yeah. He betrayed John Huntsman, but that's another story. He was like a grenade with a, you know, they have a spoon on it. <laughs> they pull the thing out and the spoon's off. I mean, I respect them and everything. And, you know, I'm PTSD. <laughs> and I'm up there with Pete. He definitely is, you know, the trauma that that man went through. And how he, yeah, he was a POW mm -hmm. yeah. for yeah. six or like, seven years. Yeah, how do I help? Beat. That's why his. They would not yeah. allow. He had the chance to get out of that there. That was a his fa Republican. Father was a four-star admiral, but he didn't take it. But you know, a very honorable man. Yeah, um, and he was treated very badly, but we won't say who. But you know, I used to have a Trump. Uh, I gave my didn't I? I gave my Trump necktie to Norm the psychic. Oh, the one that passed away. Yeah. Well, luckily your office is right near the Trump rally. Oh, I've distance. covered Trump rallies. Uh, you know, what he doesn't know when to shut up. You know, Sounds uh, familiar. I'm going to tell you. A Somebody car, should take his Twitter <laughs> away. <laughs> a car, uh, it, it's the same with everybody. You go and cover governor, uh, rep, state, or federal rep, or senator, or vice president, or the president. It's always the same. Oh, my God. You're going to get 20 minutes out of a rep or a governor. Senator is going to give you a half hour. Uh, and, you know, the vice president will go for a half hour, 40 minutes. But a president, usually, they put about 45 or 50 minutes. They don't go the full hour, but he'd go for two hours. It's like, how much can I take this? With people, you know, you're in the press gallery, giving you like, oh, it was all good fun, really, because, you know, on the camera, they're, oh, he does a great and then job they're like smiling at you. Stuff. No, I, my friends invited me to a Trump rally just for the pure entertainment <laughs> factor. You of should it. go. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. It is something you've never seen before. It is. Because he's really, you know, like. He's funny. Like, you play, would find yourself cracking up at the things he he's says. He's a New Yorker. It's all BS. Uh, you know, he's trying to tell, he's trying he's to. He's playing three-card yeah. Monty with you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every he's, New Yorker is busting He's an excellent public here. speaker, though. I well, never would have. Thought Bill that. Clinton was an excellent. No, uh, Ronald Reagan was one. No, too. Obama was hands down. I think. The Michelle, best. oh, yeah. she was great. You know who too. was the worst? Bush. I've never. The W. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was the worst. Hey, uh, we got to uh, got to wrap up here, Tony. But Tony, you know, you come back. Uh, you know, I won't be here, so you actually can get a word in or stuff. <laughs> but geez, it's so great to meet you. Because yeah. we didn't get around to talking about the ind independent, uh, because there's some good points. Yeah. I hope you succeed. Are, are you you're staying in New Hampshire? I'm applying for college in Quebec at the moment, just because. Oh, which one? So well, is McGill. Oh, McGill's a great school. Yeah. Mm. That's all. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. You certainly have the background. Yeah. Yeah, McGill's a superb what school. What are you majoring in? Poli sci. <laughs> yep. So we'll see you probably in the Canadian circles. Well, I. Government. You have I'll to just see where college takes me. You yeah. know, I don't know if I'll come back to New Hampshire. Or, you know, never know what happens in college. <laughs> See, uh, New Hampshire, the state itself, is great for exports, not good for imports. No, yeah, all of my <laughs> friends have left New Hampshire and they're not coming back. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, what's I left, you but I got sucked back, you know, but it's a vortex. I got it's sucked vortex, back too, you know. family oh, yeah. court. Well, that's from being witches, you know. We're, we're <laughs> Here they go again with that. the witchcraft. If only we could put the hexes on these people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not you, I mean, you know, the people that... The yeah, I'd have put some hexes on the uh, New Hampshire Democrats, but... Uh, I know exactly I'd who. I'd mellowed out now. Yeah, in the Democratic Party. He's mellowed out, he says. <laughs> they never helped me at all, and they'd actually do stuff to, like, interfere with you. But, mm. you know, hey, you know, that's, you've learned a great lesson in life, huh? I have. Uh, Early on, too. <laughs> Very young, never, never trust a politician. And good for you for <laughs> making a bold stance and coming out and saying. I actually verbally cheered for you in my Thank chair you. when I was, like, on Twitter. Like, yeah, another one came out. Woo! Well, the thing is, it, it's, it, this is principled, too. Yeah. It's not just, you're not, it's just not a tiff or something. Yeah. You're principled. You've seen that the, this democracy and isn't working. And you see that the, the mm. state house is full of narcissism. Yeah. It, there's people, you know, using their positions just to move up the ladder and, you know, uh, it's it's just a toxic environment, and that's actually why one of my best friends in the house resigned early was because she was going to go to independent with me, but just the backlash from the Democratic Party, she couldn't handle it, and she resigned completely. Oh. So wow. we were going to have a three-person independent caucus, but all oh, these, that would have been all cool. these young people. Yeah. I no. call it the Concord Clown College because yeah. it really is. <laughs> no, I think that if you guys would have stuck around, I mean, this is what the, this is what the adults in the room need. You but know, how, but how much uh, can you take? You yeah, know? I mean, look at the abuse he suffered. Yeah, already. Yeah. All yeah. for we what? Totally understand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at, hey, look at the story you got to tell up in McGill. You know? yeah. 
Jesus. One time. In French. <laughs> en français. En français. En oui. français. Hey, uh, we got like a couple minutes to wrap up. We're all, uh, I'm, I'm, we're all going on Matt Connerton's show on uh, I, w- I'm, I'm not. You're not? Why I'm not? sorry. She has, she has uh, child care. Child care. Well, you're going to come back to the show like Absolutely. in two weeks? Yeah, because, you know, we're gonna, what were you going to talk about in two weeks, Gracie? Oh. The movie. The movie, yes. Things are yeah. getting interesting with the film. The so. Corruption. Oh, yeah. It's called Corrupt as F hmm? Movie.com. So we're working on a, we're, we're working on a saner title because New Hampshire, the New Hampshire bubble doesn't like it. They're too pure. Very conservative. Very conservative. Yes. It tested well everywhere else, but... Get to New Hampshire, we're different. Or they're like, no. Actually, it's not... F- yeah, but anyway, um, things are getting heated and interesting. I started really doing some digging into the corruption in the state house mm-hmm. and the lobbyists and how that whole thing unravels and yeah. how that works, and um, none of it's cool. And, it, and my goal... We have a couple minutes. My goal for the film is uh, to show the dark, shady side of how things are, and it does look grim, but my... My hope, and just the Pollyanna in me, is hoping that if a we can... A New Hampshire creation, Pollyanna. Yeah, Pollyanna. Yeah. But um, I'm hoping that if we show everything on the cards to the viewer, they can make up their own decision. And do you want to be a part of this? Do you want this to keep going, or can we move forward? Well, we, we're going to move this conversation to Matt Connerton on leash, WMNH 95.3 FM. And we'll see you next week. The bit-